Yeah. So for the part one definition of term, so in your own words and understanding, discuss the following. Uh, cryptography. What is cryptography? Cipher, flash worm, computer security. And then for the part two, discuss the following the basic components. Uh, confidentiality, authenticity, integrity, availability. And for the enumeration, give at least three examples of the following. So examples of confidentiality attack, integrity attack, uh, authenticity attack, and availability attack. So, na post ko naman na yan dito sa Google Classroom natin. For group 1 and, and group 2. So, nandito yun sa mga modules na ito. <coughs> so, nasaan na tayo dito? So, by the way, mayroon pala itong mga discussions na yun. I forgot. Sapphire spread, we recorded nearly 75,000 unique infections. As we will de uh, detail later, most of these infections actually occurred with, within 10 minutes. So kung titignan nyo, mabilis talagang kumalat yung virus because of the internet connection. For 2003. Kasi noon, yun nga, mababa pa lang kasing kwan. Um, I mean, yung quality ng antivirus kasi mababa pa lang siya. So, yun. Kaya mas madaling ma-infect yung mga computers noon. Hindi katulad ngayon na advanced naman na yung mga uh, antivirus na. <coughs> Ashworms. Tapos na yan. <coughs> Ito naman yung secu uh, security threats and attacks. Uh, For the attacks kasi, we have the confidentiality, yung apat. Ayan, confidentiality attack. We have integrity attack. I've already discussed uh, those topics. Authenticity attacks, na-discuss ko na rin. Attacks on availability. <coughs> And pwedeng you will attack uh, the hardware or even the software para hindi sila makapag-communicate. <clears throat> And then we have uh, classification of security attacks. We have the passive attacks and then we have the active attacks. Dito meron pala dito. For the passive attacks, we have confidentiality and then active attacks can violate other three properties. Ano yung three, uh, three properties na yun? <clears throat> we have the availability. And availability, authenticity, and integrity for the active attacks. Next, ito na discuss ko na nito. So, for example, ano? John copies Mary's homework. So, ano yun? Confidentiality, integrity, availability, or authenticity. Pag kinopya mo yung homework, ano yung mababiolate niya? Confidentiality? Integrity? Availability? Hindi naman. Authenticity? Authenticity, asa? Authenticity. Kasi hindi na siya authenticated. Parang ganun. Hindi, kasi, hindi siya yung original. Pag ito naman, Paul crashes din the system. Pag crash daw niya yung, kwan, yung system or yung hardware, sinira niya. Or yung software, sinira niya. Meron tayo dito yung <coughs> ability, uh, attacks on availability. Kasi denial of service. So yun nga, yung pwede mo puto din yung internet connection niya, pwede mo sirahin yung software niya, or pwede mo din sirahin yung hardware niya. 
So availability attack siya. Ito naman uh, forged si uh, Rojo signature on a deed. Yes, mga mumuwi na mo. Ayan. So, saan siya? Confidentiality? Integrity? Availability? Authenticity? What do you think? Nandito na ka pala. Tingnan natin dito. Unauthorized access of information, confidentiality, or pwede rin confidentiality na mga uh, stop the flow of the message, delay the optionally, and optionally modify the message. Pabago ito, pwede rin ito, tampering, integrity attack, destroy, and optionally modify. So, ibig sabihin babaguhin niya yung message. Pero doon kasi forgery. Di ba? Parang kinopya niya. Uh, delay and optionally modify the message. This is the message again. Uh, authorized assum uh, assumption of address identity. Ito, pwede rin authenticity. Yung nagpapanggap siya. Ngayon siya, di ba? Tingnan natin dito. Tama, forge. Sinig uh, parang... Kinopya niya yung signature ng iba. Okay. So, pwede rin siya dito sa uh, <coughs> authenticity. Kasi ang autonized assumption of other sa identity. Hindi naman siya, pero nagpanggap siya na siya yun. So, yung forgery na dito yan sa authenticity attack. Noon, binibigay ko naman yung sagot dun sa, ano, sa assignment ninyo. Ayan, tapos ito yung po natin, uh, review muna tayo ngayon. <coughs> review kasi maghahanap pa ako ng maganda ko. Uh, what do you call this one? Kalimutan ko na yung tawag doon. Anyway, mamaya. Overview of cryptography. Ayan, na-discuss na natin kung ano yung cryptography. Ayan. Yung paano mag-convert ng plain text to cipher text. Ano ang cipher, ano ang key, ano ang encryption at saka decryption, uh, cryptography, uh, crypt analysis, and crypto, uh, cryptology. Na-discuss na natin natin. Ayan. O nga pala may binanggit si Ma'am Janet. Gusto ko din siyang i-share. Ano yan? Sa room... Sa Roma yun. Kasi ginamit din siya sa battle. Nakita ko lang dito kasi sinabi, military avoid giving any good ideas. So sa Roma kasi noon, meron siyang tactic or I mean, I mean technique. Hi guys, in this video, in which means writing. So there, um, guys, so to, bawa ayan, gusto nyo si Sir Sire Pod 20, Sean, you do the opposite. Pag encryption, you follow the direction. Okay, guys, um, key nya. Now, kung di pa ay nasa dulo nyo, uh, ayan, ito yung na, ano na gusto nyo. Ano na pala dito, pet? Anyway, hindi ko muna siya-share sa inyo. 23 minus 5 is 18. Ito yung sinasabi kong algorithm. 10 minus 5 is 5. 25 minus 5 is 20. And 18 minus 5 is 13. Okay? So, tapos i, balik nyo na siya dito. So, yung 12, that is M. Cypher. Kasi safe ko nga. Lali. Level ko lang siya. Ayan, ini-discuss ko din yan. Ito rin yung hinahanap ko eh. Pero... Gusto kong ipakita sa inyo. Roman Battle Tactics. Ito ata yung... Mayroon kasi sinabi si Ma'am Jan. Charging into this would have been silly. Sir, mga Morse Code. I've always liked this thing. Ha? Ito yung sinabi ni Ma'am Jan. Mga Jan Morse Code. Ano yun, Marabilia? Morse Code, sir. 
Ano yung Morse? Spelling yun? M-O-R-S-E, sir. Ito. The piece of paper. Mm-hmm. All together to create. Okay, maybe a A is... Dash, dash, dot, dash. God save the queen. Bob is the man. Bob is the man. Hey guys, today I want to discuss something that has interested me for some time. Something that modern infrastructure has done. Stop. 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 Doon na lang, ulamin mo doon sa mga kasama niya. Yun, yung mga ibang pa. Buti na lang. Okay, ito. Ginamit din nila dito sa mga school. Uh, actually, meron na rin akong nakita doon nito. Uh, kasi noon, di ba meron, I, I mean, nowadays, meron na tayong QR code. Right? Alam na natin kung anong QR code. Ginamit din nila ito eh. Gina, meron din gumawa ng isang program na kaya niyang i- convert itong oh tama Morse code pala yun ito rin yung isa sa mga what, example of uh, yung parang cryptography Morse code ang dami natin pag-aaralan na maaari ko dito pero baka isa lang ang may bibigay ko sa inyo ay ko dito kasi gusto ko na mag-jump tayo dun sa hardware Morse code depiction yan ito yung isa paan ang um, Uh, para may note ko lang siya ilalagay ko na lang siya dito okay so ilalagay ko lang siya uh, Morse code ito ko yung algorithm hahanapin natin yung algorithm yan pero pwede naman kayo mag advance if you want Morse code algorithm <coughs> material na Tapos ano pa yung isang, mayroon pa akong isang mukha. Ayan, babalikan natin yan. Ito yung Morse code yun. Ayan, nakikita natin ito sa akong, di ba? Sa mga, sa mga movies. You can't expect your team to manage work with this. With Monday.com's flexible management system. To frustrate attackers. Avoid the hot oil. Get over the... But the fact is, there's no such thing as a perfectly 100% secure computer system. There will always be bugs and security experts know that. So system architects employ a strategy called defense in depth which uses many layers of varying security mechanisms to frustrate attackers. It's a bit like how castles are designed. First, you've got to dodge the archers, then cross the moat, scale the walls, avoid the hot oil, get over the ramparts and defeat the guards before you get to the throne room. But in this case, we're talking about one of the most common forms of computer security, cryptography. <laughs> Crypto and graphy, roughly translating to secret writing. In order to make information secret, you use a cipher, an algorithm that converts plain text into ciphertext, which is gibberish unless you have a key that lets you undo the cipher. The process of making text secret is called encryption, and the reverse process is called decryption. Ciphers have been used long before computers showed up. Julius Caesar used what's now called a Caesar cipher to encrypt yeah, pala, cipher. private correspondence. He would shift the letters in a message forward by three places. So A became D and the word Brutus became this. To decipher the message, recipients had to know both the algorithm and the number to shift by, which acted as the key. The Caesar cipher is one example of a larger class of techniques called substitution ciphers. 
These replace every letter in a message with something else according to a translation. A big drawback of basic substitution ciphers is that letter frequencies are preserved. For example, E is the most common letter in English. So if your cipher translates E to an X, then X will show up the most frequently in the cipher text. A skilled cryptanalyst can work backwards from these kinds of statistics to figure out the message. It was the breaking of a substitution cipher that led to the execution of Mary Queen of Scots in 1587 for plotting to kill Queen Elizabeth. Another fundamental class of techniques are permutation ciphers. Let's look at a simple example called a columnar transposition cipher. Here we take a message and fill the letters into a grid. In this case, we've chosen 5x5. Five five. To encrypt our message, we read out the characters in a different order. Let's say from the bottom left working upwards, one column at a time. The new letter ordering, what's called a permutation, is the encrypted message. The ordering direction, as well as the 5x5 five five grid size, serves as the key. Like before, if the cipher and key are known, a recipient can reverse the process to reveal the original message. By the 1900s, cryptography was mechanized in the form of encryption machines. The most famous was the German Enigma, used by the Nazis to encrypt their wartime communications. As we discussed back in episode 15, the Enigma was a typewriter-like machine with a keyboard and lamp board, both showing the full alphabet. Above that, there was a series of configurable rotors that were the key to the Enigma's encryption capability. First, let's look at just one rotor. One side had electrical contacts for all 26 letters. These connected to the other side of the rotor using cross-crossing wires that swapped one letter for another. If H went in, K might come out the other side. If K went in, F might come out, and so on. The letter swapping behavior should sound familiar. It's a substitution cipher, but the Enigma was more sophisticated because it used three or more rotors in a row, each feeding into the next. Rotors could also be rotated to one of 26 possible starting positions, and they could be inserted in different orders, providing a lot of different substitution mappings. Following the rotors was a special circuit called a reflector. Instead of passing the signal on to another rotor, it connected every pin to another and sent the electrical signal back through the rotors. Finally, there was a plug board at the front of the machine that allowed letters coming from the keyboard to be optionally swapped, adding another level of complexity. With our simplified circuit, let's encrypt a letter on this example Enigma configuration. If we press the H key, electricity flows through the plug board, then the rotors, hits the reflector, comes back through the rotors and plug board, and illuminates the letter L on the lamp board. So H is encrypted to L. Note that the circuit can flow both ways. So if we type the letter L, H would light up. In other words, it's the same process for encrypting and decrypting. You just have to make sure the sending and receiving machines have the same initial configuration. If you look carefully at this circuit, you'll notice it's impossible for a letter to be encrypted as itself, which turned out to be a fatal cryptographic weakness. Finally, to prevent the Enigma from being a simple substitution cipher, every single time a letter was entered, the rotors advanced by one spot, sort of like an odometer in a car. So if you entered the text AAA, it might come out as BDK where the substitution mapping changed with every key press. The Enigma was a tough cookie to crack for sure, but as we discussed in episode 15, Alan Turing and his colleagues at Bletchley Park were able to break Enigma codes and largely automate the process. But with the advent of computers, cryptography moved from hardware into software. One of the earliest software ciphers to become widespread was the Data Encryption Standard, developed by IBM and the NSA in 1977. DES, as it was known, originally used binary keys that were 56 bits long, which means that there are two to the 56 or about 72 quadrillion different keys. Back in 1977, that meant that nobody, except perhaps the NSA, had enough computing power to brute force all possible keys. But by 1999, a quarter million dollar computer could try every possible DES key in just two days, rendering the cipher insecure. So in 2001, the advanced encryption standard AES was finalized and published. AES is designed to use much bigger keys, 128, 192, or 256 bits in size, making brute force attacks much, much harder. For a 128-bit key, you'd need trillions of years to try every combination, even if you used every single computer on the planet today. So you'd better get started. AES chops data up into 16-byte blocks and then applies a series of substitutions and permutations based on the key value, plus some other operations to obscure the message and this process is repeated 10 or more times for each block. You might be wondering why only 10 rounds, or why only 128-bit keys and not 10,000-bit keys? Well, it's a performance trade-off. 
If it took hours to encrypt and send an email, or minutes to connect to a secure website, people wouldn't use it. AES balances performance and security to provide practical cryptography. Today, AES is used everywhere, from encrypting files on iPhones and transmitting data over Wi-Fi with WPA2, to accessing websites using HTTPS. So far, the cryptographic techniques we've discussed rely on keys that are known by both sender and recipient. The sender encrypts a message using a key, and the recipient decrypts it using the same key. In the old days, keys would be shared by voice or physically. For example, the Germans distributed codebooks with daily settings for their Enigma machines. But this strategy could never work in the internet era. Imagine having to crack open a codebook to connect to YouTube. What's needed is a way for a server to send a secret key over the public internet to a user wishing to connect securely. It seems like that wouldn't be secure, because if the key is sent in the open and intercepted by a hacker, couldn't they use that to decrypt all communication between the two? The solution is key exchange, an algorithm that lets two computers agree on a key without ever sending one. We can do this with one-way functions, mathematical operations that are very easy to do in one direction, but hard to reverse. To show you how one-way functions work, let's use paint colors as an analogy. It's easy to mix paint colors together, but it's not so easy to figure out the constituent colors that we use to make a mixed paint color. You'd have to test a lot of possibilities to figure it out. In this metaphor, our secret key is a unique shade of paint. First, there's a public paint color that everyone can see. Then John and I each pick a secret paint color. To exchange keys, I mix my secret paint color with the public paint color. Then I send that mixed color to John by any means, mail, carrier pigeon, whatever. John does the same, mixing his secret paint color with the public color, then sending that to me. When I receive John's color, I simply add my private color to create a blend of all three paints. John does the same with my mixed color and voila, we both end up with the same paint color. We can use this as a shared secret, even though we never sent each other our individual secret colors. A snooping outside observer would know partial information, but they'd find it very difficult to figure out our shared secret color. Of course, sending and mixing paint colors isn't going to work well for transmitting computer data. But luckily, mathematical one-way functions are perfect, and this is what Diffie-Hellman key exchange uses. In Diffie-Hellman, the one-way function is modular exponentiation. This means taking one number, the base, to the power of another number, the exponent, and taking the remainder when divided by a third number, the modulus. So for example, if we wanted to calculate 3 to the 5th power, modulo 31, we would calculate 3 to the 5th, which is 243, and then take the remainder when divided by 31, which is 26. The hard part is figuring out the exponent given only the result and the base. If I tell you I raised 3 to some secret number, modulo 31, and got 7 as the remainder, you'd have to test a lot of exponents to know which one I picked. If we make these numbers big, say hundreds of digits long, then finding the secret exponent is nearly impossible. Now let's talk about how Diffie-Hellman uses modular exponentiation to calculate a shared key. First, there's a set of public values, the base and the modulus, that like our public paint color, everyone gets to know even the bad guys. To send a message securely to John, I would pick a secret exponent, x. Then I'd calculate b to the power of x, modulo m. I send this big number over to John. John does the same, picking a secret exponent y and sending me b to the y modulo m. To create a shared secret key, I take what John sent me and take it to the power of x, my secret exponent. This is mathematically equivalent to b to the xy modulus m. John does the same, taking what I sent to him to the power of y, and we both end up with the exact same number. It's a secret shared key, even though we never sent each other our secret number. We can use this big number as a shared key for encrypted communication, using something like AES for encryption. Diffie-Hellman key exchange is one method for establishing a shared key. These keys that can be used by both sender and receiver to encrypt and decrypt messages are called symmetric keys because the key is the same on both sides. The Caesar cipher, Enigma and AES are all symmetric encryption. There's also asymmetric encryption, where there are two different keys, most often one that's public and another that's private. So people can encrypt a message using a public key that only the recipient with their private key can decrypt. In other words, knowing the public key only lets you encrypt but not decrypt is asymmetric. So think about boxes with padlocks that you can open with a key. To receive a secure message, I can give a sender a box and a padlock. They put their message in it and lock it shut. Now they can send that box back to me and only I can open it with my private key. After locking the box, neither the sender nor anyone else who finds the box can open it without brute force. In the same way, a digital public key can encrypt something that can only be decrypted with a private key. The reverse is possible too. 
encrypting something with a private key that can be decrypted with a public key. This is used for signing, where a server encrypts data using their private key. Anyone can decrypt it using the server's public key. This acts like an unforgeable signature, as only the owner using their private key can encrypt it. It proves that you're getting data from the right server or person and not an imposter. The most popular asymmetric encryption technique used today is RSA, named after its inventors Rivist, Shamir and Edelman. So now you know all the key parts of modern cryptography. Symmetric encryption, key exchange and public key cryptography. When you connect to a secure website like your bank, that little padlock icon means that your computer has used public key cryptography to verify the server, key exchange to establish a secret temporary key, and symmetric encryption to protect all the back and forth communication from prying eyes. Whether you're buying something online, sending emails to BFFs, or just browsing cat videos, cryptography keeps all that safe, private, and secure. Thanks, cryptography. Crash Course Computer Science is produced in association okay, with you. Cockamelon. Dahil napanood natin to, meron ako na kuwang idea. <laughs> okay. Anyway, nasabi ko naman na sa inyo yun, na one of your output is, uh, you will create an application na <clears throat> parang ganito siya. Okay, na i-apply nyo yung cryptography. Ayan. So, for example, kapag, uh, yun nga, kailangan nyo munang gumawa ng sarili yung algorithm bago kayo magagawa ng sarili nyo parang secured applications. So, any programming language siguro or maghahalap mo na ako ng magandang programming language <coughs> na <coughs> mas madali para makagawa tayo ng cryptography. Yan ganyan. Okay, so, for example, uh, gagawa tayo ng message. And that message, pag sinend ko yung message na yun, Meron siyang formula na based dito sa video natin. Pag nag-send siya daw ng, ng uh, message, i-encrypt uh, niya yan. Doon sa encryption niya, may kasamang formula. And then pag, pagka-send niya doon sa, sa receiver, i-decrypt uh, niya. Okay, i-decrypt niya pero dapat pareho sila ng formula. Nakuha niyo yan, yung kanina, parang ito, yun no, dito ko nakuha yun eh. <clears throat> parang sinasabi niya na meron siyang secret color daw. Secret color. Yung secret color na yun is hindi naman literal na color, kundi formula siya. Formula. Na ang makakasolve lang nun is kung sino lang yung malakahawak ng tamang formula para siya lang ang pwede makabasa ng message. So, ibig sabihin, kapag mali yung formula niya, um, hindi niya makikita yung code. ba? Diba? Meron na to eh. Example lang. Ito pa rin yung mga open niya. Uh, na naisip ko na rin. Alam niyo yung Google Authentication? Nag nagamit niyo na yung Google Authentication? Hindi. Opo, sir. Yan. Yung Google Authentication kasi, for example, lumiwat ka ng ibang computer unit, nilagin mo yung Facebook mo. Hindi mo yun basta-basta may lalagin kung <coughs> uh, hindi mo iseset or kung hindi mo ibibigay yung tamang code, combination, uh, combination ng code dun sa Google Authentication. Okay, parang pan yan, parang OTP. Siguro naman yung basa nyo uh, familiar na kayo sa OTP. Yung one-time password. Diba pag i-open ninyo, magsisend siya through, through, it's either through email or through SMS. Diba? So, nakajumbled yung, ano, nakajumbled yung number. Yun ang kinatawag pala nilang key. Yung parang dito. Okay. Um, meron siyang combination ng key. Kapag tama yung combination ng key mo, doon, 
pwede mo na siya malagin yung Facebook mo o kahit anong application na ginagamit niyo. So, parang ganito din dyan. Uh, parawa sila ng code or parawa sila ng um, <coughs> formula. Kasi sinabi nito mayroon siyang formula. Eh. And for example, yan daw. Ito yung formula niya. Pero, gumamit din silang module to. <clears throat> Yan, so kung tama daw yung x niya, I mean yung ano, tama yung x. Tama yung exponent niya. Uh, at pareho sila ng output, kumbaga. Kung nag um, pag nesend niya na for example ano, yung message ko. Yung message ko may kalakip bago mo niya buksan, magso muna siya ng problem. For example, mathematics. Okay. Simplihan lang natin. Uh, meron akong message, pero bago mo buksan, sagutin mo muna ito. 1 plus 1. Okay. Pag sinabi niya, yung, pag ginamit niya yung formula niya, for, for example, yung, yung pa niya, formula naman niya is 1 minus 1. Example lang, minus ang ginamit. Magkaiba sila ng output, magkaiba sila ng result. Ibig sabihin, hindi para yun sa kanya. Parang ito ang sinasabi niya dito. Okay? <coughs> Ngayon, pagkuhan naman, tama ang formula ko at tama din ang formula niya. For example, uh, bago mo ito batanggap or mabasa, uh, ano ang formula mo? For example, 1 plus 1, 2. Eh, yung formula ko is 1 plus 1, 2 din. Pag pareho daw sila, makakatanggap siya, ng, matatanggap niya yung message at mababasa daw niya. So, ganito ang sinasabi niya dito. Pareho sila ng formula. Yun yung tinatawag niya lang key pala. Public key sinasabi niya dito. <clears throat> Ito naman, ganun din. Hmm. Meron din siyang uh, formula, mathematically equivalent to. So, pag pareho daw sila ng result, matatanggap niya. Siya yung receiver talaga. Ito naman yung public key. Kung sino lang yung nabigyan ng public key, siya lang yung makakatanggap. Siya, siya lang yung makakabukas nyo. <clears throat> Ito naman yung asymmetric uh, encryption. Marami pa ng encryption. No? Meron din yung kwan. Uh, meron pa siyang sinabi kanina na swapping. Yung isa swap niya. So, imbis na A, B pa lang ibig sabihin yun. Swapping. Encryption pala siya. So, marami tayong pwedeng Pwede maging basihan kung paano gagawa ng application na ganito. Crypto group. Okay, very good. Okay, so nakalang dito naman na. And then, <coughs> pa yung isa. Sound because of forest. We can express encoding method. Uh, what does it have to do with binary? Siguro maganda rin ito na. So sabi ko nga first time ko tong yan din. More sound algorithm. Pwede rin natin tong gamitin tong more sound algorithm. Tignan natin kung paano natin iyan ay sa mga topics natin, yung mahal ko rito. Kasi, yun nga, bago tayo gumawa ng program, ng application, kailangan alam muna natin kung ano yung mga algorithms na uh, kinamit nila para makagawa tayo ng sarili nating algorithm. So, like I said, you will create your own algorithm. Okay? Anyway, sabi naman nila, uh, one example of algorithm is program. 
yung ginagawa niyong program that is algorithm ano ba ang algorithm? pag-usapan na lang pala natin kung ano ang algorithm <coughs> So, in mathematics and computer science, an algorithm is a finite. Ibig sabihin ng finite, meron siyang n. Hindi siya pwedeng infinite. Okay? Infinite kasi yung kabaliktaran nito. Finite sequence. So, ibig sabihin, meron siyang ending. Finite sequence of well-defined instruction. Typically used to solve a class of specific problems or to perform computation. Okay. So, for example, uh, ang problema ko, hindi ko alam mag-add. Hindi ko alam mag-add. Eh. Uh, so, kailangan ko ng algorithm para ma-solve yung problem. Diba? So, paano yun? Pwede program. Pwede kang, pwede kang gumawa ng isang program na mag-add. Or pwede kang gumawa ng isang flowchart. So, uh, flowchart is also an algorithm. Kasi mayroon siyang instruction. For example, input, meron siyang condition, and so on. Meron din siyang output. Okay? Yan yung example of algorithm. So, you will create your own algorithm para makapag-encrypt at makapag-decrypt. And that is for defined. Sana. Ano mo, madali lang naman. Hindi naman yung... Huwag naman yung masyadong complicated na uh, encryption and decryption. So, yung mga simple lang na encryption tsaka decryption lang. <coughs> okay? So, yun na lang muna. For the meantime. Then, next meeting, siguro, try ko to. Itong mga algorithms natin. Then, after that, gagawa lang ka ng application din. Sige, attendance muna tayo. So, ano? 6.33, IT22. Tatlo. Group 1 more. So, today is March 1. <coughs> and <coughs> Abaga. Sir, present. Abuan. Present, sir. Aglubat. Ano pa sa Aglubat? IT22 Group 1. Group 1. Wala. Sir, napang nagbakasyon, sir. Ano, baka nagbakasyon, baka nagbakasyon na. Pangatagarod na din, sir. <laughs> Dumagam ka ni mga arti, sir. Pangata pa yan. Seryoso? Oh, nakainol siya. Paano yung klase niya? email ko na lang siya. Mag-email na lang ako sa kanya. Okay, next. <coughs> Aguilar. Present, sir. Duque. Present, sir. Gallegos. Wala, Gallegos. Galvez. Sir, present. 
They're present. Jose, Anthony Jun, Manalo, Maravilla, Mendoza. Sir, present Maravilla, sir. Sir, present Mendoza. Maravilla, Mendoza, present. Mercado. Sir, present. Nares. Sir, present. Pimentel. Sir, present po. Surel. Present, sir. Balobar. Present, sir. Kalika. Present, sir. Corpus Regi. Present, sir. Gapi. Present, sir. Tariento. Present, sir. Gasaga. Present, sir. Pero... Okay, that's all the presents. Wala ka suguro mo. Leonin Karen. <coughs> Leonin Karen. Obra. Present, sir. Present. Uh, Tabapunda. Present, sir. Section. Ay, uh, group 2. Okay, it's March 1. Bakani Bakani Balsita Balsita Bergantini Borilio Star present. Flores, Moses, Galvez, Jelen, Gauna. Present, sir. Go, Christian. Agood. Present, sir. Agood. Hidalgo. Present, sir. Pularbal. Present, sir. 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 Rimorin. Rimorin, what? Surat. Present, sir. The Humus. Present, sir. Flores, Mikael. Present, sir. Maniques, Ayala. Present, sir. NCS. Kamaka, wala. Ngayaan. Present, sir. Last call. Aglubat, Gallegos. Jose, Manalo. Leonel. Uh, Bakani, Balsita. Bergantin, Flores, Galvez, Jalen. Go, Christian. Limpayos Limurin And then sa CS Akamaka 